In this video, we're going to cover how to pull data or information from your Excel file into your VBA code and how to write data from your VBA code back into your Excel file. And there are a few different methods we can use to accomplish this reading and writing of data, and they all operate based on a specific worksheet. What that means is if that if we follow through our object hierarchy here, we should start with our application, which is Excel, move to our workbook, which in this case is example, and then select our sheet. In this case, we'll mainly be working with data sheet down here. And then we can start to interact with the specific data that we want to touch. And as we start to identify information for our code or write information back into the Excel file, it becomes really important that we've specified each step of the object hierarchy. It's important to ensure that VBA knows the specific cell on the specific sheet in the specific workbook file that we're dealing with. Otherwise, VBA will default to assuming you're looking at the cell on the active worksheet, which may or may not be the correct worksheet, especially if your v VBA code is bouncing across several different workbooks or several different worksheets in order to work properly. So the first thing we're going to look at is this cells method of writing data. The cells method is something we've actually seen a couple of times now when we've created example macros before. So now we can get a bit more detailed on the cells method of data. Cells are, of course, the individual cells on worksheets. So we identify them by giving their row number and then their column number, kind of like a coordinate system. So if we come back to our data sheet here, if I'm interested in referencing, let's say, cell C2, this would be row 2 and column 3. 1, 2, 3. So I would reference this cell by saying cells 2, comma, 3. And that would represent this highlighted cell we see on the screen here. So now we're going to go ahead and open up Visual Basic by going to my Developer tab and then going over to Visual Basic. And we can see I have some previous modules and previous code that I've written in here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this open module and insert a new one. And we'll create a new public sub. We'll call this data testing. And now I'm going to go ahead and type cells to three dot value. So again, this dot here, this little period, means we've identified what we're working with and we're ready to move further into our object hierarchy. In this case, I'm interested in what the value is of cell 23, what's written in that cell, what data lives there right now. And we're actually going to overwrite that value with our own value by setting it equal to something like this is cell C2, like so. Now if I go ahead and shrink these windows like so, and I come over here, click into my sub, and I click run, we can see my cell C2 was overwritten with exactly what I told the VBA to write in there. This is cell C2. Now, we can actually reverse this logic and pull data out of our Excel file and into our VBA code using the same cells method. So if we create a variable here, and we'll say, I just, I'll just create this little EX variable, for example, and I'll say that's a string. I can set ex equal to cells 2, 3 dot value and hit enter. And now when I run this, uh, the variable ex should actually pick up what value is in C2 at the time that we run this. So I'm going to go ahead and output that in a little message box. And we'll just message box directly what that variable is. So I'll go ahead and run this code. And we see we get a little message box that pops up and says this is cell C2, which is, is exactly what we would expect seeing that we assigned the value of this cell C2, 3 to our variable EX. I'll go ahead and give us a little bit more space here. Now, the cells method of interaction is really helpful for identifying specific cells, and we use it a lot in loops and if statements. So this is probably the most common interaction type you'll use for specific data in VBA. And there are other things you can actually do with cells, like select to select a cell, or we can do things like clearing contents or changing the font around. So for example, let's add a few lines in. We'll keep working with cells 2, 3, which is cell C2. This time we'll put dot font. And now we know we're looking at the font properties of cell C2. And specifically, we want to look at something like the size of that font. And you can find out what all of these properties are through the object library or through Microsoft's help site. Uh, but they're generally everything that you would expect to be able to change with uh, the font of a given cell. 
So we'll go ahead and set this equal to something like 14 so that we can see a change. Now let's also go ahead and we will clear the contents of that cell. And then last, we will go ahead and change its value to be something different. We'll say new cell value, something like this. And we'll go ahead and click run. We can see our EX variable is still reading this is cell C2 because that's what's typed into this cell right now. We'll click OK. And now we can see our font size has gotten a lot bigger. Um, it's changed to this new cell value here that we had. We didn't need to clear the contents if we didn't want to. We could have actually just skipped this line entirely and just rewritten the value to be what we wanted it to be. But clear contents can be helpful if you're trying to clear uh, big ranges of data or anything like that on your file. So we can change the font size, we can change the font style, we can make the color of a cell different, we can resize the cell, and all of those are really straightforward properties. But when we use cells specifically, we are referencing a single cell on that sheet. And this kind of begs the question, what do we do if we want to mass reformat the cells? We don't want to have to go cell by cell. So is there a way that we can mass change the properties of a range on a sheet? And that is exactly what the range method of interaction is for. The range method will let you provide a start cell and an end cell, and then let you interact with that entire range that you had selected. You can also use range to interact with a singular cell, but most of the time you use range for interaction on a large scale, and the cells method for interaction of a singular cell. For range, you can also use named ranges in your Excel file. So on my data sheet here, you can see I have a list of fruit in column J, apples through melons. And I can convert this into a named range by going to the Formula tab, clicking on Name Manager here, and clicking on New. Now, if you haven't used name ranges before, they're sort of like our variables in VBA. You can see here we have a chance to name them, so I'll name this something like Fruit. And then we can point to the name fruit in a certain cell or range of cells on my file. And in this case, it's my, my range of fruit here from J2 to J8, which we can see has already been selected. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And now we can see it appears in our name manager as uh, the fruit name applying to this particular data range that we have selected. Now, anytime I reference the name fruit, if it's in a formula on my Excel file, if it's in a range in my VBA code, Excel will be able to tie it back to this range of cells here. So as an example, if we come back over into our code, give ourselves some room, we can type range. And now in quotes, I'm going to type J2 colon, which means through J8, end quotes, close parentheses. Now this range, we're giving it the start cell, we're giving it the end cell, and we're saying we want you to select everything in between these two cells. That's what the colon stays, stands for. So J2 through J8, and we've put that in quotes. Now we're going to type dot font. We'll get into the font properties of this particular range, and we'll go ahead and mess with the bold property. And we'll set that equal to true, which means it will show as bold. So now instead of having to go step by step, cell by cell through this list, we're able to do it all at once by saying range J2 to J8. So this line references the range by its cells, so alternatively we could use our named range. So in this case we'll type range, and instead of typing J2 to J8, we'll type fruit. And this time let's change the color. So we'll say interior dot color index. And we'll pick a number like 37, which should be a light blue. And you can look up the color index list online. Alternatively, if you want to reference a more specific color, if you want to use, for example, RGB inputs, you can do that as well. So we'll type range fruit.interior.color. And instead of saying color index this time, we're just going to say color equals. We'll type RGB to make it clear that we're doing a red, green, blue input open parentheses, and we'll type 100, 200, and 250. And this should be kind of a light, bright colored blue. But if you ever want to know exactly what your RGB input is going to look like, if you click back into Excel, go to the Home tab, under the Back Color drop-down, you can choose More Colors at the bottom here, 
go to the custom tab instead of the standard tab and you can pick things in the standard tab if you want to we could pick kind of a lighter green or something but you can go into the custom tab and you can see this lighter green this is the RGB code for that particular light green color we could also overwrite these directly with our inputs in this case we said 100 200 255 so we can see this is that blue color that we're going to get out of this particular RGB input. So we'll go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to step through this line by line so we can see what each of these does. So I will go ahead and you can either use debug step into or you can just hit F8 on your keyboard, which is what I'll do. So the first thing we should see is our cell 23 value, which is cell C2, should turn into this is cell C2. So I'm going to keep hitting F8. And now we should be pulling our EX variable, which should be equal to what is currently in cell C2. F8 one more time, we should see that pop up in our message box. And this looks right, so we'll click OK. Now cell C2 should change its font size to be 14. It's already 14 because we've already run this, so we shouldn't see any change. After this line, we should see the contents of cell C2 disappear. And we'll rewrite them to say new cell value. Now we should be on this line changing the range of J2 to J8 to be bold and that looks like it's worked properly. Now on this line we're referencing the named range of fruit which is our range J2 to J8 and we should be changing the interior color of that to be index number 37 which is a light blue color so we'll hit F8 and we can see that's behaved as expected. And if we hit F8 one more time we can just see that the RGB method works just as well so we'll hit F8. And we can see our blue changed colors just a little bit. Um, so there's two different methods of referencing those colors. So we'll hit F8 one more time to end our subroutine. So these are going to be our main methods of interacting with data through VBA, this range and cell method. And we talked a little bit about the difference between the two and how we can use them moving forward.